Good evening YouTubers. So what do I have here? I've got Scientific Linux. Now, the reason why I came across Scientific Linux is I happen to be sifting through DistroWatch. So just give that a chance to load. And uh, oh, a few things have loaded up, but uh, I found uh, Scientific Linux here. Okay, you can go and get it from these links. Okay, I downloaded it from my local ISP. Um, so these are uh, pretty sizable downloads. So probably you, you could probably use these uh, smaller ones, but I use this main one. And um, yeah, uh, I've been just testing it this afternoon. You might kind of wonder wonder why you would use um, uh, Scientific Linux. I guess uh, one of the reasons why you might use Scientific Linux is because it's uh, related to uh, Red Hat Linux, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, I should say. Um, but the thing about Red Hat is you kind of just you can't exactly just go go and download Red Hat. It's uh, not like a normal distribution. So if I go Red Hat, right, uh, and I go Red Hat download or something like that, download. So I'm gonna have to go through a portal, a customer portal. So, not exactly uh, friendly to uh, for downloading, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, there's it's a it's got a it's got a wall essentially. So, uh, what uh, the guys from Scientific Linux and indeed CentOS do is they grab the uh, the Red Hat sources, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux sources, and they uh, they compile them. They do a recompile and remove any trademarks and things like that that might get them in trouble with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Of course, uh, CentOS is now part of Red Hat. Enterprise Linux, or they're at least uh, they've uh, formed an alliance, and uh, so uh, probably less of a problem for CentOS, but uh, nonetheless uh, for Scientific Linux, uh, they uh, they need to do that. Now, uh, Scientific Linux, we can just go to the website. Um, so uh, let's have a look. We'll go to the website. Probably close these other ones. Okay, so you might want to find out about who they are. It's basically the people from Fermilab support. And, you know, they sponsor it. You can kind of find out who, who does it, why they why they do it. Okay, so uh, basically the long and short of this, you can have a look at it for yourself, but basically it's a nice stable uh, build for them to do their work on. Uh, unlike the name, it, it isn't actually about science or anything like that. And we're about to go through the applications and take a look. The default desktop environment here is uh, GNOME, and it's of the three variety, GNOME 3, even though it's got this sort of uh, look to it that might make one think that it's um, uh, GNOME 2, 2.32 uh, or something like that, it, it indeed is not. We've got this funny wallpaper actually indeed that it changed changes throughout the day, uh, it changes colour, I've noticed it for, uh, you know, changing colour throughout the day. Um, so that's pretty much the short of it. Um, the, uh, the GNOME uh, interface is a classic interface. Uh, it does also have the GNOME 3 shell, which uh, we can actually bring up just like by doing this. Okay, so we can uh, see that. Uh, we can see here that I'm actually doing the uh, the uh, recording just there. I'll have a discussion about that just towards the end, uh, or if it's appropriate throughout the video. But yeah, you can get to the GNOME shell just like that. It still has these uh, these menus here that you might find uh, kind of useful. Uh, but uh, for easy use, we'll just go through these applications just through the menu here. So, uh, favorites, we can see a little bit of what I've been using here. Well, I have been using Firefox, as you can tell. I've been using the terminal as well, but these are favorites. These three here are pretty much uh, installed by, or they were there at least uh, after a short while. Um, so, accessories, look, we've got the usual candidates here, the calculator, as we normally see. Uh, might see if we can find out some details about that. Yeah, so we're looking at the 3.14 release uh, just there, presumably. Um, we could uh, take a look at DistroWatch actually just again and see uh, whether I'm quite correct about uh, the um, the versions here. This is indeed 7.2. Oh, that's just an image. Um, this is uh, yeah, this is version 7.2. So it's a, it's a point release update. If you've got the previous version, uh, version 7.1, uh, pretty sure you can just do a a, a um, update and you'll uh, get the latest. Um, so let's take a look here. So just have a click on there. I'm just going to take a look at the, uh, the default packages, and uh, you can see GNOME Shell. Yeah. So we're looking at 3.14, as I said. 
So nice reference to pi perhaps there, although yeah, 3.144 rather. All right. Um, so anyway, um, so clocks you can uh, set yourself up with some world clocks, an alarm, stopwatch, a time, which is kind of neat. Kind of don't see that too much on uh, desktop distributions unless you're running GNOME. KDE's probably got its equivalents, but I haven't seen it. Uh, we have here contacts. Okay, I'm just going to quickly go through this um, because uh, although you, you know um, Scientific Linux could be touted as a, a equally a server distribution or a uh, or a, um, a desktop distribution or something like that, um, you know, and it does have the GNOME interface. Uh, it is lacking a little bit on the uh, the application side. We'll talk about that a little bit in, in a bit, and that kind of relates to what I'm going to talk about with regard to how I'm screencasting this. Um, so uh, documents, which is just to show you which uh, documents that you've seen uh, recently or viewed recently. Okay. Um, t -t 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 uh, files, which will just be a Nautilus. Okay, it's got a standard uh, icon theme for GNOME. You could change that if you wanted to. Uh, t -t 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 what else? Uh, G edit. You know, G edit is the usual suspect. Pretty simple editor. I prefer to use Vim. Vim's on this by default. I didn't install Vim. But it is, uh, it is on there. So I think we can just uh, demonstrate that. You can just go uh, vim, um, yeah. What do we got here? Nothing in there. Um, okay, that's kind of interesting. Um, probably because this is an EFI install. Um, but we can just go uh, touch, touch file. Well, actually, we don't even do that. Vim file. Okay, and there you go. So uh, we can go which vim and uh, ls uh, dash l uh, dollar, and we can see here um, that we're using indeed the real vim and not some sort of uh, soft link or something like that. So uh, yeah, um, weather. Okay, so I live in the city of Perth. So let's have a look at Perth. There are a couple of Perths in the world. Perth, okay. Uh, Perth, West, yeah, great. So, and then you can see. Unfortunately, look at this. Uh, the uh, the temperatures are in the US locale, so you'd have to change that. I don't know if you can uh, do a simple. Oh, here we go. Uh, we'll go with Celsius. So, yep, we can get the details in Celsius. Everything's cool. He's there. Okay, uh, it's a nice little uh, nice little application there. Uh, documentation, we can have a look at the release notes if we really want to. That's just uh, pulling up a file from uh, the uh, uh, slash user slash share there. So you can take a look and see the various changes in there if you want to. Um, <coughs> and you've also got help if you want it. Uh, graphics, we don't have the GIMP installed. It's very likely available in the repositories. In fact, we'll just take a look here and see if it is. Okay, yum, yum search, uh, GIMP. Let's have a looky, and it looks like GIMP is, yeah, looking actually for the GIMP application, looks like a bunch of libraries are there, but uh, yeah, it's, ah, here we go, sorry I just missed that, so it is there, um, we'll go to that, right, um, so not much in the way there. We've got the LibreOffice drawer, which you can have a look at there. See, um, you know, which version of LibreOffice we're using. Using a fairly old version now. I think uh, we're, you know, obviously in the five series. So it, it, we are starting to look a little bit antiquated. Theming is not as nice as we might expect. Uh, again, LibreOffice drawer comes under both graphics and uh, and uh, Office, which I kind of find suspicious. But let's go into Internet first. We've got Empathy. Empathy is a chat client. Uh, I'm not going to put my details in there. I've shown you that before. So we'll just close that. Okay. We would be looking at uh, older versions of things in here. So, yeah. What do we go to the website? Empathy. Might take a while. So we'll just let that continue. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, we got Firefox web browser, which we just had a look at before. It is using that nice new theming that they've got uh, with uh, Firefox that they introduced just a while back. Um, we are looking at an older version, slightly older version anyway. 
um, but I wouldn't really worry too much. It's probably very heavily patched to make sure that it's secure, uh, knowing that it's uh, that its upstream sources are from uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So, um, okay. Uh, do. So I just showed you um, uh, LibreOffice before, so we won't go through all of that. Uh, cheese and videos do come by default. Mplayer does not. Uh, again, we'll deal with that later. So cheese is just for your webcam, and uh, videos is just so you can watch videos, as they say. Let's actually just try and um, let me have a look at something. Um, actually, we won't bother with that. I'm not going to prove the point. Uh, the thing is with um, videos, uh, which is really totem underneath, is it's not going to be able to open all those file formats that you kind of kind of come across on the internet. Uh, or should I say on the World Wide Web and um, yeah so that could be a bit of a problem which is why I've installed mplay, I've installed it by hand um, uh, now moving on yeah, the bug reporting tool, firewall, this will be using IP tables I presume Hop back. so you can just choose which services you want um, to allow out Presumably it's using uh, IP tables or the like. I mean, I'm a little bit, uh, my knowledge on um, firewalling in GNU plus Linux is a little bit uh, a little bit old, but uh, last time I thought that was either IP tables or uh, PF tables, I think it might have been called. Something like that. Um, obviously ICT, which will be a Java implementation, the, uh, the free and open source Java imp implementation, Orca, which is going to give you the uh, reading of uh, text. Uh, so uh, an accessibility tool. Um, we've got the print settings. Let's have a look at that. Just takes you there. Again, I just recommend you use Cups. Probably easier in the long run. And SE Linux Troubleshooter. So SE Linux is the security suite. Uh, it uh, competes with the likes of App Armor, um, basically preventing escalation. In fact, uh, there was a discussion a while back on, uh, or a couple of weeks back, about Linux kernel having a, uh, an escalation through its keyrings mechanism, a potential escalation there. Now, it was mentioned actually that uh, uh, distributions of the Linux kernel such as Android um, would be safe from this because they have SE Linux by default and uh, f uh, the Fedora Red Hat, uh, you know, the Fedora slash Red Hat slash uh, Scientific Linux, CentOS, all those guys, they use SE Linux by default so probably not vulnerable to that uh, issue. It would provide at least a a layer of protection. I shouldn't say they're not vulnerable, but it provides a layer of protection. Uh, our system tools, uh, we've got the application installer, which is going to be pretty low brow, really. Um, just let's go shopping. It's kind of amusing. Got the X chat there. Um, so you can, can install um, some applications that you might, uh, you might want to. Uh, I guess we can just, I suppose, install Rhythmbox. Let's just do that for fun. Gotta put our password in. Now, I wonder if, yeah, we didn't get the, okay, so let's look at empathy in Wikipedia. Okay, let's give that a tick. Okay, no, we're, we're on a re relatively recent version of empathy, so no big deal there, it's just that empathy seems to be falling behind the main GNOME uh, releases in terms of the version numbers. I don't know, maybe they're not entirely related to each other, but I thought they were, to be honest. Okay, we'll just leave that. So, uh, going back here, we're just installing Rhythmbox. We could have done that through the command line through yum. Uh, I noticed today when I did uh, DNF that uh, we don't have DNF yet in um, uh, in the Red Hat based distributions. They fall a little bit behind in terms of the bleeding edge because their focus is on stability, both on the servers and desktop. Um, so really an enterprise solution. Let's have a look at Rhythmbox, make sure that works nicely. Now that we installed it. And it does. So that's pretty cool. Fine. So um, a problem occurred. Oh, no. So we did have a little bit of a bug there, but I noticed no, nothing that uh, untoward in Rhythmbox itself, it was probably just on close. So um, 
Yeah, uh, do to uh, application installer, you can do your software updates, get automatic updates, start up applications, set the applications that you want to start up when you log in. I suppose if you've got any custom things that you you want um, to run. Uh, your system logs, now it's going to be looking in slash fast slash logs, so clearly it's going to want the, the, the root account to take a look at that. So we can see here the xorg log there. So, uh, system monitor, that's going to be pretty bog standard for you guys. Again, you do have the likes of top installed. HTOP is not installed by default, but similar command is top. It also told you, if you didn't notice that, so it also tells you similar commands, which is great. Okay, so we can close that. Um, so, we'll just give our Virtual Machine Manager a miss for a moment. Uh, I installed that, it wasn't in there by default, but one of the key things about um, uh, the Red Hat based distributions is that they pretty much have first class uh, virtualization solution. They don't have 3D yet, I don't know when they're going to have 3D, um, but uh, we'll get there eventually I guess, when it becomes dire and important. An archive manager that you could uh, use in place of TAR, um, the character map, the dictionary, dictionary again. Haha, <laughs> well, old favourite, favourite one. Yeah. I don't know why. Ah, here we go, finally. I just must have missed it when I've been doing my scoping. I would have thought they'd come up as the first de definition. Uh, okay. Uh, just use a generaliser, you know. Maybe it looks a little bit different to the ones that we've previously looked at. Uh, disk. Oh, actually, no, it was disks that look like this rather than disk usage generalizer. So you can see all these devices I've got here. You can see, look at this little, little nice little detail here. Look at the SAMI. Um, three bad sectors on this. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? Disk is okay. No bad sectors on the one I've installed at. Uh, what else have we got? It's the block devices. Yeah. Oh. XFS for home, but root they're using that's interesting. They're using XFS instead. I didn't notice that at all. So that's uh, that's kind of curious. Let's have a look at that. Uh, uh, yes, it is. And DD. I didn't notice that before. What if thought they'd use either EXT4 or possibly, if they're fe feeling daring, BTRFS. But uh, no, um, the document viewer, that's just going to be events, as you would have seen many, many, many times before, about events. Oh, um, that's kind of annoying. I'd probably turn that off. Might be able to use the gnome tweak tool to turn that off. Uh, yes, the font viewer. Let's have a look and see if that comes up. We can close this terminal. Or we can close rhythm box. Oh, the installer for Rhythmbox. And yeah, you can see all your nice fonts on there. Look nice and pretty. Uh, the image viewer. Surprised that it actually didn't come up in graphics or something like that. Or office. I would have thought that'd be a more suitable place to put that. But no. Passwords and keys. It'll be a key ring. You can manage your key rings there. Add passwords. Keep them in a secure place. Remote desktop viewer, we've looked at it all forward, take a screenshot. Nice. And we can now use this places bit, hopefully it's in pictures. And we can just look at that, isn't that beautiful? Lovely. See it uses the dark theme for those media based, uh, all the media type applications. We've got the terminal and we've got the tweak tool. Ah. Now I did say before that we desktop do, do. extensions no. fonts windows oh. mm. we can do that yes can. appearance oh whoa she froze ah uh -huh. that's not good that definitely is not good for 
for an, a desktop and you know an enterprise desktop that is not good they've included the tweaks by default I didn't install them in there and for it to do that not a good look so very very unsound on that one as I said I've been using it all afternoon and not really noticed any behavior that I I uh, thought was bad or anything like that but uh, we've just now managed to see that window action key disabled let's have a look at that okay okay that's not really doing what I thought it might do which is disabling the windows key for um, for showing uh, the gnome the gnome shell top bar Look, you can, it's kind of might be this is, might be more applicable if we're running gnome shell itself rather than running the classic mode maybe classic mode just runs the way it does and then that's it so I won't go anything more into uh, go into any more than that. Okay, so uh, a couple of things. Let's now look at one of the major use cases for this is actually running virtual machines and and putting loads on virtual machines instead of putting them on the host directly. So uh, let's have a look. In this case, I've chosen to install Fedora 23. Let's run that up. See what performance is like. View full screen. Ah, that's one thing I forgot to do. One thing that it likes to do is scale display never. That's what I like to do. Noticing it's slightly less responsive than the native desktop. With the key presses. But here we are, we're in Fedora. And uh, you have no compositing um, or uh, hardware accelerated compositing here. We're using LLVM pipe. Um, for that, but yep, nonetheless, it does produce a working virtual machine that we can use. So, shut down that. Let's have a look at how long it takes to turn off. These things under System D are usually quite quick. So, I'm not going to go into the virtues or drawbacks of uh, System D right now, but uh, yeah, yeah, that looked uh, quite nice. Runs kind of quickly. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you anyway that it. I mean, one of the key features is, you know, first class virtualization built into the kernel via KVM Kimu. So, okay, so that's that. You can see the graph of usage there. Um, now, the next thing I was going to bring the attention to, I'm going to take the magic away for a little bit. Um, you know, we usually try and hide uh, the session that we're uh, recording in, but I'm going to show you that now. Um, now we've got the screencast going on here. Now, the reason why I'm showing you that is in we don't actually have FFmpeg installed by default. Okay, we don't have it. We don't have any screencasting tools installed by default, and FFmpeg happens to be one of the best if you know how to use it. So, um, one other thing you're going to find is uh, FFmpeg scientific. Now, this this is not really scientific's fault entirely. I mean, they could probably choose to do something differently, but. Yeah, see, people have just sort of... Okay, maybe maybe it's there. Okay, they reckon that it's there. Okay, yum, search, FFmpeg. No, it's not there. So, uh, I've installed FFmpeg uh, by hand um, so that I could do this screencast. One of the ways people usually do it is, and this is one of the ways I thought I'd do it, is I'd use the uh, RPM Fusion uh, CentOS 7. Now I found when I looked this afternoon, I didn't find the relevant details uh, for it. Let's have a look at RPM Fusion. I did type CentOS there, but nonetheless, it's it's the same business. They're binary compatible, so um, yeah, you can you can see here they go up to Enterprise Linux six, and that's it. So. Um, you're not going to be using RPM Fusion, at least to the best of my knowledge. Perhaps you could, but I think it'd be pretty risky to try and do it, since they're not saying that it's available. So yeah, the you don't have these applications. I mean, again, I mentioned that I don't have um, 
you know, M player, and and M player is one of the best um, media playback uh, tools that you could have. Videos just really doesn't cut it unless you've got the um, a G streamer, you know, ugly or um, you know bad. Or the good they got the good ones, they got the bad, and then the ugly. You know, like the bad ones are patent encumbered, ugly is probably not you know probably patent encumbered but not even implemented correctly or something like that. It's not it's not really the best. Mplay is just sort of you know it's uh, the creme de creme of um, of media playback tools, I suppose in my in my view and only. But um, yeah, it is. So I've installed Mplayer. So I've done that via source code. I've had to install the dependencies, and uh, you know it's working quite nicely and, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, so they're not going to include that sort of stuff because it's uh, patent uh, encumbered, according to the you know according to the Fedora website at least. If we go to Fedora, which is really the upstream for Red Hat and for all these other Red Hat-based distributions, um, Fedora uh, FMP. Yeah, no RPM file. This is an old post, admittedly, but it's still it's still uh, relevant. Let's have a look at what they say here for FFmpeg. They might even be providing a package. So they take it RPM Fusion, and again, so there and lie the issue. So, <laughs> so you're not going to be getting it from there. You're going to have to compile it from source, like I did, pretty much, if you want to use this. Which could get for some people lulled. I mean, I kind of find it interesting to do it, but yeah. So, I've taken you through it. I would like to just sort of, I suppose, uh, finish up um, to discuss what I thought about it. So, it's a competent distribution. I mean, apart from that GNOME shell crash that we had earlier, it's been pretty stable. No real dramas with it. Uh, I don't really like the limitations in terms of the applications uh, there. Uh, even Debian, which is an American-based distribution, has the likes of it, um, you know, VLC, which relies on those libraries, and most likely, I think, does have mPlayer. Um, pretty sure it does. If I go here, go Debian, Debian mPlayer. Pretty sure it's going to come up. Yeah. So you know, there you go. So multimedia codecs. You can get all. That sort of stuff, and you can get get it from Dev Multimedia, I suppose. But now with uh, the absence of a decent RPM fusion, um, you know, availability there, um, would this would I recommend this for a daily drive for most people? Uh, probably not. I'd probably just recommend Linux Mint or something like that, uh, or even I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend Ubuntu just because it's got a different interface and there's also the uh, you know the privacy settings and all that sort of stuff to to kind of concern yourself with. So, but uh, talking about scientific Linux, if you're looking for a stable desktop and you know what you're doing, you're happy to compile source code or whatever like that. Look, it's been pretty stable for me. Um, you're not stuck with the GNOME desktop by any st stretch of the imagination. You can use and you can use um, KDE if you want to. Uh, so, you know, uh, for its purposes, I'd probably give this a sort of, um, you know, an eight and a half out of ten, uh, particularly because it's, you know, it's doing what's advertised on the box. It's it's pretty stable. Um, or well, in this case, it's probably really rock solid to be honest. It's just a bit of desktop stuff that's bothering you. You're probably going to put this on the server rather than desktop anyway. But um, you know, it's doing the virtualization thing quite well. I've had no dramas with it at all. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. So yeah, I'd probably give this an eight and a half. So yeah. Uh, anyway, if you uh, liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you really do like the videos in the long run, please uh, consider subscribing. Uh, and uh, you know, again, um, the value in this community is that you. You know, you comment and uh, and give feedback to both myself and uh, other people who comment. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, take a look at it if you want to, and uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, up and coming videos. So, anyway, have a good night, good day, or whatever you're having, as Daz Grigor used to say. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. See you next time.